What up, this is Rama, screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Jessica Jones Season 2. I just finished uh, binge-watching all 13 episodes. Holy crap! <laughs> that took up a whole day and, and plus a few more hours. Uh, and, oh man, by the end of that 13th episode, I was just like feeling sleepy and... <sighs> <laughs> it's so exhausted. My eyes were like red. Uh, so I, I want to do this review not in jump cuts, um, uh, 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 polished, scripted style, but in raw, you know, uncut, and pretty much one take. Because I and and by the way, this video contains spoilers. This review contains spoilers because I will be recapping. What happened in season one, and of course, I'll be recapping season two. And the reason why I want to do this um, straight one take is because, and and with spoiler filled, is because also that I want to dissect uh, the episodes, and I can't do that spoiler free. You know, if I do it spoiler free, then I would have to be cryptic about it or dance around it, and. And so it doesn't really get my point across. So this video is mostly going to be most effective for those of you who already have watched season two. And season two has been streaming on Netflix for about two days now. Um, yes, because uh, I think it was wise. I think it was smart that they uh, they launched season two on the day of uh, International Women's Day on March 8th, which is Thursday. Because you know how Netflix usually launches their movies or TV series on Fridays. But it was smart that it was on International Women's Day. It was very fitting. It was very appropriate. I was all for it. Um, so it's been on for two days now. And I'm and I'm hoping that most of you have gotten to watch it by now. Uh, but if you haven't, um, again, heads up. Uh, this video contains spoilers. All right. So in season one... We saw uh, pretty much at the end of it, Jessica Jones uh, killed uh, Kilgrave. Uh, now, Jessica Jones, for those of you who haven't watched the whole series, why haven't you? <laughs> it's it's probably the best of all the Marvel Netflix shows. Um, it's really awesome, especially season one was was just amazing. Um, m part of it is because this character, this Jessica Jones character, is so she's so cynical, she's so pessimistic, she's so. Uh, uh, skeptic. She's what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't know about goth. I don't think she's goth, but she's just like you know. She doesn't take uh, too much. Or excuse me, she doesn't take too many things out there as a big deal. You know, there's only a few that she would consider a big deal, and that usually involves um, solving the his her, uh, her clients' mysteries. Uh, in season one, it involves um, this bad guy Kilgrave, which is, which was also who was also a big part of why season one was so amazing. David Tennant as Kilgrave was so great. Um, he, you know, a hero is only as good as the villain, and that villain was just sadistic, brutal, because he can make you do things without you realizing it. He has that power to. You know, the next thing you know, you put your hand in the in in the sink razor, or uh, you you pull your gun and put it against your temple, and you know, uh, with your finger on the trigger, it was just like you know, you 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 are in the state of awareness. You are aware that you're doing that, okay? Um, so it's not like hypnosis kind of thing, but there's nothing you can do to resist it. Because his his command, his voice is just so. That's his power, man, and that's like the scariest superpower uh, a villain could have. Um, so at the end of season one, again, you know, this video contains contains spoilers. Jessica Jones killed Kilgrave, and now season two starts out with apparently Jessica Jones doesn't like it if people call her a murderer or a killer, even though. She did kill Kilgrave. Now that that cracks me up, um, because <laughs> folks like Jessica Jones and Daredevil, they don't like it, you know, being associated with 
the word murder or kill if they had killed before because they think that oh justice is about to uh, supposed to be about something more than that and that's cool i'm i'm all for that too you know i'm an idealist in real life i think uh you can't take uh, law into your own hand you got to you know let the cops do their job all that good stuff um but we're talking about comic book world here so in a vigil- vigilante world things like killings sometimes happen unfortunately um and it's funny that seeing you know folks like Daredevil and Jessica Jones feeling bothered or feeling guilty about that, whereas whereas Frank Castle, the Punisher, killing is just Tuesday for him. <laughs> so I, I, can, I can just imagine Frank Castle is like, "What are you guys whining about?" Oh, and then as he shoots somebody. Uh, <laughs> so the, the episode starts out that way. She's like, no, I'm an investigator. I'm a PI. You can't hire me to, you know, to kill anybody. I'm not. A, I'm not a killer. Um, so she's trying to brush that whole reputation off, even though people are like, ah, oh, you're a hero, but you're a hero, a hero that kills. No, I'm not. I'm not a hero. Okay, I'm not. I, I'm not a killer. Um, I just want to pay the bills. Uh, so the whole season snowballs basically from Trish um, Jessica's friend trying to dig up Jessica's past and what's clever about the writers of this season too is that they because you know they, they're trying to stretch it right through the whole 13 episodes they don't let you in at first or they don't let you know the motivation behind Trish's uh, persistence or Trish's obsessions obsession with uh trying to dig up Jessica's past. At first, at first you, you know, you think that Trish is uh, uh being a good friend, right? Hey, you know, uh because Jessica's parents uh died in a car accident supposedly and and, and her brother and she she got experimented on. And so you think that Trish wants to help Jessica kind of face her past, kind of face uh her past so she can move forward. That kind of good that kind of good stuff. But, you know, throughout the season, you'll get to know that there's more to the story uh, of Trish than that. Um, I, before I move forward here, I got to say, if you're asking me what my verdict overall of the season two is, I don't think it's as good as season one, mainly because I want to say there's not one singular baddie or villain that stands out and and Kilgrave Kilgrave raises the bar really high it's hard to top him of course um but it's more of it's more of a familial thing more of a family thing going on and you think one person is the bad guy but then there's another person is a bad guy but then you know that bad guy is, seems to just want to protect themselves or protect her, their family so maybe they're not really bad guys so you go that oh how about that one instead it, it, the villainy in season two i think it's a little bit over the place um it's not really clear uh and that's that's a little disappointing on my part at least i don't know if you think it is disappointing because again i'm a big believer in a hero is only as good as the villain and and there's no one-dimensional problem here going on, but still, oh man, you know, to 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 go from Kilgrave to this, uh, you gotta admit, <laughs> it's a little bit of a letdown. Um, so the whole thing with the the experimentation, right? Because that's how Jessica got her powers. So Trish digs up the the past, and it has to do with this. Uh, facility called IGH so throughout the season IGH IGH keeps being mentioned again and again IGH this IGH that IGH oh my god I was like oh stop it with the IGH already um, there are some episodes that I think was just were just there so that the writers could have an excuse to bring them up again later on as fillers uh, and by that I mean 
uh, cases, all right, cases involving Jessica's uh, superintendent uh, and the, the building superintendent, cases involving uh, Jerry Hogarth uh, and her fight against her uh, colleagues in the law firm, that, you know, that... They they don't really have necessarily anything to do with the whole Jessica Jones family dilemma and the IGH pursue. So those things get brought up again later on. So to either bond or so that so that there's a way for those character uh, for those cases to help the characters evolve or change at the end. Um, as a matter of fact. Some of the cliffhangers, I believe, let me see here on my notes. I think the cliffhangers on episode 8 and episode 9, I believe, they don't even have anything to do with the whole IGH conspiracy. It's got it's got to do with this one Asian dude, uh, the competitor of Jessica Jones, who's who has a beef with Jessica Jones. Um, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> they just have to end it there. And you thought like, Oh my God! Something's happening, and then you watch the next episode. Oh, it's just that one douchebag who can't let his grudge go. <laughs> so, so it's a little bit of a, a tricky thing on the writer's part to do that to us. Um, I was like, you you would think it would be something that reveals something bigger, something more about the IGH, but no, it's just it's just the, a douche with a with a sniper gun. Um, you 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 see what I'm saying when you watch the episodes. Let's see what else, what 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 else do I have there on my notes. Um, okay, so there were some episodes in which uh, Jessica Jones kind of gets framed. Episodes where Jessica Jones spends time with her mom. By the way, actress Jan Janet McTeer plays the mom. She's an Oscar nominee, two time I believe, and she was in that movie that I like a few years ago called Albert Knobs, where Glenn Close plays a dude. Um, so what do I think about Janet McTeer? Let me see here. I think she she does okay as Jessica Jones' mom here. She, uh, she doesn't stand out. Again, as, as I said, she doesn't stand out like Kilgrave. But her character super strength does get scary from time to time. Um, she's more, I guess she's more unpredictable. Um, you know, Kilgrave may have an agenda, clear agenda, whereas um, Jessica Jones' mom is just kind of shooting from the hips or doing things off the cuff, you know, or, or doing things because she's angry. She's like a freaking Hulk. Um, so she, she doesn't really have a clear agenda uh, like Kilgrave may may have. Uh, so uh, that's that's how it, I would differentiate the two as the as the villains of this franchise. With regards to Trish, without giving too much away, even though this is a spoiler filled video, I can relate to to Trish dilemma. So basically, her motivation is that she wants. And it's not like it's not like it's out of jealousy that she wants to have superpowers. She just feels like if she has superpowers, then she can save or she can help people better or she can help people more. Um, and I think that's a sad thinking on her part because she doesn't realize the power that she already currently have. And, and that is the power of media. Uh, she is an influencer. That's power. I don't know about you guys. To influence somebody, um, that is power. Uh, and she has that through the radio wave. Um, but to her, that's not enough. That's not enough. She wants to be out there on the field, actually... You know, knock, you know, landing some punches, actually kicking some butts. Uh, and I was like, dude, you can actually influence people. You, you, you have millions and millions of followers who worship you. Um, she doesn't, re the, and the fact that she doesn't realize that, that's just so sad. Um, she, she can use the power that she has already for good. But no, that's not enough for her. 
so that's that's a bit about my opinion about Trish. Um, Malcolm, Malcolm has quite an arc in the season two, as you know, season one. In season one, Malcolm was uh, more of an addict. Uh, a lo- I want to say, I don't want to say a loose cannon, but a liability. There you go. Malcolm was a liability in season one. In Malcolm two, uh, in season two, Malcolm actually is coming into his own and and is getting really good at being a PI. Being, you know, even though Jessica Jones, of course, as you know, Jessica Jones is one of those people who do not want to give credit, <laughs> even when even when credit is due. Um, but Malcolm is really, really good at tracking people down, at 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 uh, tracing people's backstory and and finding out people's dirt, people's you know, uh, the skeleton in the closet. He is really good at that, uh, and so we get to see that in season two. Um, even though Jessica Jones often dismisses him and and he, we get to see him also develop some sort of a relationship, romantic relationship with Trish. Uh, turns out Trish is also a former addict uh, because of her child star fame. Um, so they connect in that way. Um, but Malcolm is, wow, I got to give it to Malcolm. Uh, he keeps he he he's, he tries really hard to stay sober. To, he even says to Trish at one point, "We we have holes in our in each other. You know, I have a hole. I have a hole in our in my soul. You have a hole in your soul. I don't think it's good for us to fill each other's hole." <laughs> I know it sounds sexual innuendo that, that what I just said. But basically, what he, he's saying is like we can damage and hurt each other if we get too close here. Uh, but of course, they end up, you know, sleeping anyway. Um, so, I I was really impressed with how the writers plotted um, Malcolm's arc throughout this whole season. I like I like that character, uh, and uh, the the guy who plays him, hmm, I keep forgetting his name. Uh, Malcolm Malcolm, Eka Eka Darville, I think that's his name. Want to double check? Yeah, he's a fantastic actor. Uh, with regards to Jerry Hogarth, um, played by Jerry, why did oh, yeah, played by Carrie Ann Moss, the actress from The Matrix. She ha- her arc in the season two. I don't know about you guys, and you can tell me your opinions in the comment section below. She has been diagnosed. She she got diagnosed with ALS, and she ultimately gets tricked uh, or conned. By a couple of people who told her that they could heal her, and but man, even though that whole thing to me is a bit of a is a bit of a detour, you know, in a way, the only thing that hooks that plot to Jessica Jones' IGH conspiracy um, is, you know, it's all about leverage to Jerry, right, Jerry. Would help Jessica Jones pro bono, pro, pro bono, pro, pro, pro bono, if Jessica Jones would return the favor to Jerry in some other way. So that's the only hook that connects, you know, like a Venn diagram thing that connects those two. But the whole thing with the healing and the and Jerry being conned, that seems to me for the most part is a bit of a, a significant detour um, and a little bit of a distraction. Uh, but one thing for sure is that you do not want to cross Jerry Hogarth. <laughs> she is one of those people. If you know people, uh, certain family members maybe or peers who are as smart as Jerry Hogarth, at smart at coming back at you or uh, smart at committing payback, you know, just be careful, okay? Because she'll do it. In um, not in a you know bloody Bruce fist kind of way, but in a legal way, she'll she'll dig up dirt on you and use that against you. Um, you can call it blackmail. You can call it manipulating someone. But Jerry gets it done. Jerry gets it done. That's that's why she can be scary. I think. Uh, uh, coming down to my final points here, I want to say that. Season two is filled with these characters and these arcs that 
are quite engaging. Okay, as I said, even though some of them feel like, you know, taking you to another route at times, you know, it's like, oh, I want to get back to that IGH thing again. Why, why are you taking me to, to, to Malcolm and Jerry Hogarth and all? But their stories are also worth following to a certain extent. All right. It, and it comes back or it connects to or it gets tied to Jessica Jones' IGH uh, pursuit. Um, it, it's not a detour for detour's sake. Let me just leave it at that. Seeing David Tennant as uh, Kilgrave again on episode, let's see here, episode 12, I believe. Yeah, because, oh my God. So David Kilgrave apparently serves as her, um, I guess, evil, uh, guilt. I want to say guilt, not conscience, but just guilt. And she's like, you're a killer, Jessica. <laughs> you're a killer. Embrace it, Jessica. What are you doing resisting the, who you are? You're a killer just like me. And Jessica keeps like, no, I'm nothing like you. I'm better than you. You are a scum. <laughs> and so, oh, my God. David Tennant plays that character so well. Oh, she's uh, he's like, uh, there's nobody else I could picture as Kilgrave other than David Tennant. That's how how good Tennant has pretty much embodied this villain. Um, I'm going to miss Kilgrave so much. Um, overall. Again, as I said earlier, just wanna wanna reiterate myself: the fact that there's not one singular villain that you can passionately hate in season two, that can be problematic as you watch this whole new season. Um, you know, with the thing with Jessica Jones' mom being unpredictably explosive, it's nice and all, it's nice, but but she's not. What's the word I'm looking for here? You know, villains like Kilgrave, like I said earlier, they have an agenda. They they are vindictive. Um, so the absence of that, you know, it's it's a little. It doesn't make you feel threatened. You know what I'm saying? Whereas Kilgrave, if Kilgrave is around, even if you're watching him on the screen, if you're not, you know, even if he's not in your living room, you feel like, oh my god. Oh, that guy that's with him in that same room. That's it. He's a dead man just because Kilgrave is there. Whereas with Jessica Jones' mom, ah, it, you don't you don't get that same sense. Um, so I, I I hate to compare them again and again, but that is how I feel about this season two, with regards to good guys versus bad guys, heroes versus villains. Uh, I gotta commend the writers and Melissa Rosenberg, the uh, show writer, for successfully set it up in a way that they they don't necessarily behave as if the defenders did not happen, but they behave in a way that they uh, the characters have pretty much moved on from that. All right, so they're not clinging on to that the, the defenders events. You know, they're not, they don't mention, uh, my God, Matt Murdock got killed in that blast. No, I'm worried about him. Jessica Jones doesn't, doesn't say things like that. Um, so it doesn't necessarily pick up from where season one left off. But the, season, but the consequences of season one uh, do cross over or do come over to, to affect Jessica Jones and um, her fellow characters in season two. Uh, last but not least, Kristen Ritter, fantastic job once again as the lead role. Wow, this girl, <laughs> this girl got gets it down pat when it comes to um, you know uh, belittling you or seeing you as or dismissing you. It's like, <sighs> or she's good at rolling her eyes. She's good at like uh, thinking you as a little bitch or whatever it is. She's like so good at being cynical. Kristen Ritter gets the 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 expressions down pat. She's she's so good at that. I I I hope you get to watch season two just to see Kristen Ritter do more of that. Even if you may not be too impressed with the whole plot overall, 
Um, that's it. Those are my thoughts about Jessica Jones season two on this one take review. Uh, I hope you um, can share your thoughts in the comment section below. And please share this video with all your friends on the YouTube verse. And as always, subscribe to my channel. And if you can uh, throw me a few bucks to support this channel, because I do a lot. I do red carpet interviews. I do press junket interviews. I do TV interviews. I do unboxing segments. Um, I go to all kinds of press events. Uh, so I want to make sure I can continue sharing those with you. Uh, especially WonderCon is coming up next. WonderCon is in about two weeks, I believe. So I'll be covering that as well. So I need your help. I need your support. So please, 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 please go to patreon.com slash ramascreen. Patreon.com slash ramascreen. One buck per month or two bucks per month can go a long way. Uh, any little help you can uh, provide will definitely help. All right, patreon.com slash ramascreen. Sign up there today and become my patrons. Let's rock this.